here at the Gold Hill Cemetery. Uh, just outside of Gold Hill, Nevada. Um, this little... Always wanted to come check this out. Uh, we got the Spirit Talker app going. And we're just checking out the different... The different graves. Uh, we just came up to Mr. Orville Jackson uh, Wolcott here. And I said hello. And I said I'm afraid to talk. Yeah, it's a little cool up here, a little chilly. It's about 40, what we say, 47 degrees? 41. Huh? It was 41. 41. And it's only going to get colder tonight. So. <laughs> this one doesn't have anything in it. Thank you for talking. You're welcome. Would you like us to talk with you some more? Because we can definitely do that. This one, uh, I can't quite, Denon P. Stevens died June 5th, 1886, so definitely, oh yeah, see here's another unmarked grave here, most of the graves are weird because they're they have these railroad ties sitting around them. There's another one. William True Scott died July 16th, 1867. He's only 40 years old. Well, we thought we'd just do a little impromptu video. Oh, I've always seen this place over there from Gold Hill. Never quite knew how to get up here and found the road to it today, so we're uh, checking it out. This is weird. It's got holes like they have holes through them or something. This is trippy. Harold. Harold? No, the car's got a lot of It's got horses. Which, uh, <laughs> which one are you at, Harold? How'd the horses get in here? Two for like eight, probably. Mm -hmm. No, Georgia Jones. Oh, there's four. Died September 29th, 1877, six years and nine months. Cora, four years and six months. Alice, two years and seven months. Holy cow. And Diane, 14 years and three months. That's sad. And they died on the same day. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wonder if it was some type of accident or... Yeah. And yeah, those died almost two months apart. That's a heck of a headstone. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's little... Toys inside. Oh. An affectionate remembrance of Henry and John oh. J. Jones. I said cool. <laughs> uh, who departed this life December 24th, 1871, the beloved sons of Rob and Jane Jones. Henry T., 14 years, John J., 9 years and 9 months. They are not dead, but gone before our precious darling boys. Death wrapped them in a snowy shroud to awake mid heavenly's joy. Their horse stood over. Them with care by the land of God was holding there. Three days and nights on the mountain lay, guarded by angels until born away. <laughs> that is. There's a buried cup or something. Oh, for the flowers. Oh. You put the flowers in those. Let me see that being in the headstone. Yeah. Oh, you don't step on the graves. Right? Like this one. Well, let's go back this way. We'll work our way back. I'm like, oh, squirrel moment. Which one's where? Oh, look at this one. John John Beckerleck, native of England, born October 14th, 1844. Died November 2nd, 1871. Nine. Nine. Aged 27 years. Erected by his brother. So his brother... 
gave him this headstone. This one has a lot of headstones. Oh, crap. This one looks like it fell over. Yeah, I wish they'd have. We were just talking, you know. They should have people come up here and take care of this a little bit more. Oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. This one's stuck in the the concrete. Demand. Demand? What are your demands? I knew there was something in here. This one's another one in Cornwall, England. He's only 35 years old. Then his daughter, Sarah, died March 12, 1877, 11 years and four days. I hadn't ever seen any of them concrete over the top of them. No. That is definitely strange. This one's James. This one right here has got a bush going right in the middle of it. It's a bird in the bush. Is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. I see it. It's hopping around. That's one. Erwin H., son of Fred and Cora Strauss, born at Dayton, Nevada, November 12, 1893, died February 16, 1913. I was killed. I'm sorry you were killed. It's like brothers. Mm -hmm. That one died at Gold Hill, Nevada. Is that a wall up there or is that an above ground? I don't know. It like kind of looks like a wall. Oops. And this is Cora, the, the wife. And then Frederick, the husband. So the whole family. Mom and dad and two sons. Oh, here's another his song. This is the one from the Hobbit. Yeah. D.L. Bean, age 38 years old. Native of Kentucky, died February 15th, 1879. Oh, aged 14 months. Mm. And Donald L. Bean died February 2nd, 1882, aged two months. There's a lot of young ones. Mm -hmm. Of course, back then they. I need more Ella, energy. Ella yeah. Bean was five days. You can use whatever energy you need to to communicate with us. We're just here to just to kind of walk around and maybe to listen to some of your stories, if that's possible. There's a piece of wood in the concrete. That's weird. So here's another unmarked. Right there. Here's a couple more. This one's actually back in the bush and the headstone's laying down. Thirty-three years old in five months. Mr. Viscombe. J. H. Or maybe it's Biscombe. Wow. That's sad. Good and evil here. Good and evil here. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Like I don't believe there's any evil entities or anything up here. Maybe they're just bad people up here buried. I'm sure there's a lot of good ones like that. A lot of these kids. Oh, yeah. 
Is it the same the thing? The markers are gone. On this one? This one. Right back in there. Oh man, look at this one. Birdie. Sunstrom, 1910 to 1999. Ashes to ashes at home with her mother and family. So looks like the Carr family. So Bertie, Robert, Geo, Harry, and Emma, and baby John. Wow. What? Push this button. Why? Because I want a picture that I have stolen. Yeah, you could do that. Looks like another, maybe I'll mark grave right here. We definitely think anybody that wants to come and talk to us. So we, we're not, we're not grave robbers. Closer. Closer? Do we need to come closer to talk to you? Uh, are you trying to talk to us, William? Is that who's trying to communicate with us right now? Hmm? No, we haven't gotten any names. Mm -mm. Oh no, Harold. You've been before. We've been before. We've been by this right here before, but we haven't been here before. Can you tell us maybe where you're buried at, Harold? That's who we're talking to? Uh, which way? i go this way. Since we're already on this side. I don't know where to walk through this one. I'm just going to go right between these two. Let's go all the way to the far ones and then we'll walk back up this one. Oh, okay. I'm just going to look at this one real quick. I'm over here. In memory of Estacio G. Pedro. Died August 14th, 1875, aged 43 years. Native of Pico. 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 Asaurus? Is that an A? Great. That one looks to be unmarked. I had a long life. You had a long life? Did we find anyone? It's been past, what, 40 years? Oh, that one up there, uh, 1910 to 1999. Juno Krenner. Almost looks like a badge. It is. 69th New York INF. Infantry. Infantry. But look at So look New how look how the, the dirt's on there. Mm -hmm. It's like a face. It does. That is crazy. I almost fell down backwards. I like how they use the natural stone on this. Uh huh. No, for sure. Like, this is a crazy cemetery. As far as where you're walking and. Yeah, we apologize if we are walking on your. That's on your grave. That's not our intention. It's like Armstrong. But I don't see anything. Else about the appear. Appear. Can you appear to us? Are you here in the cemetery? That's hollow. Is it? Huh. 
Are you trying to appear to us? Henry Henry Wingate, born at Gorham. Gorham MC. I don't know what that is. February 28th, 1835, died November 28th, 1865. That was only like 30 years old. A lot of these people that buried up here died really young. Okay. Thank you. It's like one of those square nails, too. Six months or eight months, six days. Harry and Erwin. 73 years. Yeah, that's one of the older ones. Mm -hmm. I say, because a lot of the ones we've seen in here have been children or people in their mid 30s or 40s. He wants out. Broken. It means it's over yeah. Oh. Thomas Cook died March 18th, 1876, 30 years old. Killed trying to save the life of comrades in the Knickerbocker shaft. Oliver. <laughs> Oliver. Was Oliver maybe your brother? I wonder what kind of tragedy befell in the the Knickerbocker shaft. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to look it up. I mean, it's got to be within this area, I'm sure. You can't even really make up that headstone. Here's another one that fell over. What? Looks like we walked over oh, the Sorry, we didn't... We're not trying to. They don't have this really mapped out really well. So if, if we are walking on top of your graves, we definitely don't mean any disrespect. Branch. Branch. In memory of Ann Littleton, beloved wife of W.M. Nettle, age 43 years. Native of Cornwall, England. It says farewell, I love you. I accidentally hit the stop button, so I just turned it back up. Oh, look at these. These are these are wooden. Keep getting a little bit. Earl. Didn't we get an Earl earlier? This one was a, uh, a mason. Look at the headstone right there at the top. Mm -hmm. This is Ralph. Hello, Ralph. Ralph Gillespie. I'm a child. Born 1875. Died November 2nd. I can't tell. Oh, uh, he was 10 years. Battle. 19 something. Battle. Oh, oh it says in memory oh, at the top. Said, that one said, uh, I'm a child. Yeah. Maybe you're trying to figure out the date. Are you, are you the child, Ralph? Is that what you're trying to tell us? That one, can't. there's nothing on that one. Mm -mm. Or this one. Nope, and there's just a broken headstone there. <laughs> I don't even know if it would go with this one. Yeah. I guess it would. It looks, because it looks like the the little frame of it. Oh, look at these. Up here. Robert, Robert Bruce. June 24th, 1887. Age 24 years and 3 months. Native of California. Eight. Eight. One of these 
headstones over here. You're eight years old. The heck? Richard Bray, who lost his life by bursting of the flywheel. Oh, man. So that one there is a mining accident. Samuel Arnold, Westfield, Massachusetts, January 10th, 1829, died in San Francisco. December 15th, 1864, age 35. So, yeah. Violet. Violet? Looks like another Mason. Do you... Um, was that your favorite flower? A violet? Or maybe your favorite color? Is that the type of flowers you'd like on your, your headstone? I don't know. Win Henry Bennett, looks like another Mason, a native of England, died died trying to rescue the lives of his fellow miners. And the something drift, June 2nd, 1882, 1882, 29 years and three months. Man, that's pretty courageous thing to do to give your life to uh, save others especially in an accident huh a dead squirrel the date is oh the date is broken <laughs> I'm like a dead squirrel what, huh? <laughs> it's a pet cemetery Oh, this one's a big one. Look at how big this one's mapped out. You've got to go. Oh. So you've got to go. That is up on a few different contracts here. Yeah. Do you not do you not care to have visitors? Or maybe you're trying to to warn us, Francis V, wife of T.J. Biowell, died November 18, 1876. See, look at it, 29 years old, 47 years old. There's a lot of... Did you? Where? Anxiety. Hey. Yeah, no, yeah, you're probably right. Anxiety. No, no. Oh, yeah. That's a, a no. That's a RV, car. A Those were the voices I heard. Whitney's having a squirrel moment. I heard something. <laughs> Did you hear what they said? Hmm? Anxiety. Anxiety. Do you have anxiety? Please move back. Oh, okay. Okay. What do you need us to move back on? Edward Conrad. Ooh, born in Russia. January 3rd, 1833. Died August 22nd, 1897. <laughs> First Russian I've seen up here. Dolls move. Ooh. What is it? It's a dolls move. And the only dolls that we've seen were Oh, there's another one that's broken. Richard J. Peters died August 13th, 1892, age 52 years old. <laughs> I stepped on a broken headstone. Ooh. Wood. I thought it was just a piece of wood. Keep 
<laughs> I'm 10 years old. <laughs> Says I'm 10 years old. March. Let's say 1852, 1902. Tonkin. Robert. Yeah, there's got to be some place up here that you would think would. I mean, just a couple hours a month, you know. It's a oh, it's the train. Is that the train? Yeah, yeah, because he's on the PA system. Mm. That's loud. This one said I'm 10 years old. This one here is age 11. Well, the one you were at earlier, this, whenever it said I'm a child, was 10. This one's Harry. Harry Hamilton Stone and Frank Irwin Stone. And that one, who he by, died on the 4th of July. He died three days later on the 7th. Mm -hmm. Five years and three months. And his brother was two years and three months. And nine days. Wow. Jones. They were super specific Jones? on age. Yeah. And then their other brother died three years later, June 3rd, 1877. That's sad that there's a lot, so many children. The amount of boards there, I'm going to say those might have been a grave. Like Here's another one. George Wilson died January 10th, 1875. Three years, 10 months, and 15 days. Jesse, his brother, died July 31st, 1875. Aged one year, one month, and 22 days. Uh, the same year. First you lose your oldest, and then you use your, you use your, lose your youngest. That's sad. I don't think I've been in a cemetery where there's been so many children. Well, there was a lot in Canada. I don't I know, but I don't think it was like this though. Like I think the majority of them that we've seen here have been kids. Now it might be different on the other side or there. You wanna have that one? This one is Rich Ricklin died May I say second, 1867. It's really hard to pick out. This is a woman. Pretty sure it's a male. And Dora M, daughter of J N and H O'Donnell, born March 14th, 1870, died September 25th, 1888. Like I said, there's so many, so many children buried here. How much sense does that make? What? You got the opening for the gate, but it's right here next to the gate. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they need a bigger one, like you bring in a tractor. And... Oh, this one's going to be... A lot harder to navigate because look at right in the middle of that one. Yeah. There's a headstone right in the middle of it. Right in the middle of what? Right here. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, I'm over here. Might as well come take a look at it. Uh, Chauncey Griswold. I think Born in Madison Morris County, New Jersey, April 1st, April Fool's Day, 1839. Died September 29th, 1868. <laughs> Makes you wonder how many of these people that were up here were uh, miners. You know, up here in uh, Gold Hill and Virginia City. I'm sure there are quite a few. 
on their way maybe to California. This is just a stop for them. Makes you wonder if they had the medicine that we had now, now back then. This is Fell. Um, how many of these kids would have been alive? Because when we were in Tonopah, we kept getting um, uh, what was it, lungs? And a lot of them died of uh, ammonia. So, I mean, it was kind of kind of spot on with that one. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm glad you ducked. I didn't even see that. <laughs> and then he just got a slice, throat sliced by barbed wire. <laughs> from Virginia City making its trek back from Gold Hill up to up to VC. Uh, Mary Sullivan born at Portsmouth, New Hampshire, March 20th, 1858. Died April, died April 29th, 1874. Gone but not forgotten. Yeah, it is. That one, look at that one. That one looks newer. Twelve. Twelve. Nevada Traveler, 2022. July 24th, 1936 to February 13, 2022. <laughs> look at it. It's cut into the shape of Nevada. That, that could be a happy coincidence. Yeah. Maybe it is. I don't know. There you go. Maybe that was maybe that was yours. Oh, that's a train again. Yeah. But he's like, I hear dead people. No. <laughs> they have pills for that. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Mary's grave. This one's an older one. PM Holmes, 1834 to 1873. Margaret, his wife. Oh, there's a name for you. Anastasia. Lawrence and Edward. John, Mary, Josh. Agnes. Yeah, Anastasia, William, and Eugene. <laughs> I said John, I said Josh. Yeah, I mean, any of the mounds because they could be built up like, this like right one. here. Yeah, so I'm like just Very stepping on. Step. Oops. Like here. I was so scared. Yeah. I can, I can imagine. I'm not sure a lot of people are too fond of dying. So it definitely probably has to be a scary situation for sure. This one's all chewed up. I can't make out anything. This would be one of those ones where you lay like a piece of paper over the top of it. Yeah. That would be cool, because then at least you could identify. John Lawson. John Lawson is the only thing I can make out on top. Here's another one that looks like it is. Head down to that one right there. Mm 
in this right here like hell. Literally. Ashes. Ashes. Did you pass away in the fire? Or maybe you were cremated, but they gave you a, a headstone, something that you can just come back and... Okay, well, they're just holding the... I assume it was probably an old fence that was holding up. Erected by his loving wife, Ellen, in memory of Michael James Keating, who departed this life March 8, 1875, 34 years old. I think that's just... Again, it could have been, could have been a liner. Look at this old tool right there. Maybe it was once his. I'm definitely not gonna touch any of that. I don't want anything get attached. And, I'm back with this. Me, I don't have a problem with it, but yeah, Whitney's not too happy about stuff like that. There's another, another unmarked grave, but it's got a tree growing right in the middle of it. Is that uh, Mary? Is that who? Are you the one that w wants me to leave you alone? <laughs> I don't mean you any any disrespect, Mary. I just came to. Kind of pay our respects and wanted to come check out this, this cemetery. But yeah, I, I mean, I can't even imagine how many unmarked or how many. What? I'll be right there. My name is Michael. Uh, so my name is Michael. I'm sure I've seen a Michael or two in here. Are you walking with me, Michael? I'm watching over us to make sure we don't do anything. Oh, look at this. Mary. Died August 3rd, 1868, aged aw, one year, four months, and six days. Okay, and that is sad. That is just sad. That children died so young back in, back in those days. There's another. This one is huge. Yeah. This one right here looks like it's about five foot and it's cracked in half. It's 21 years old. Cabin. Cabin. I said cabin. Huh. There's another one. Yeah. Oh, gotta get over here where I can try and read it. In memory of Annie E. Brennan died October twenty first, eighteen sixty seven. She was aged six years, ten months, and twenty-one days. Sleep on, sweet baby, and take thy rest. God called thee home, 
he thought it best. Rest in peace, amen. That is super sad. Sorry, I know my camera works probably all over the place because I've got the camera in one hand and spirit talker app in the other. Look at how they did the, the age and the dates. Died Gold Hill, September 17th, 1869, aged 43 years. Argue. Argue. George Nelson, infant. Son of N and M Wright, age 12 days. 11 seconds? I haven't seen any marks like that. Oh. It's a big headstone, too. Mm -hmm. I think it might be. years old, Thomas Hope, native of Derry, Ireland. Wow, Ireland, England, Russia. Oh, okay. Maybe this belonged to that one over there. Newborn? Yeah. So uh -huh. much in the rocks it wouldn't get blown yeah. away or washed away. Back up. Yeah. yeah. Watch out, there's barbed wire on the ground there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't really tell. <laughs> oh, look at this one. Alright. That's a big headstone over here. It's like a sled of some type. Oh no, it's the outside of the stomach. Ooh, stomach. This one here, John B. Delbridge, and. Joel James Delbridge, 45 years old, and it's like 51 years old. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. If you're a doctor and you die. If you're a doctor and you die that young. It's supposed to be helping the people. Huh? Sorry. Yeah, well. It's okay. This is something I think because it's, I mean, it's small, but the rocks are around it. Oh, the horses were rude because they shit right in the middle of it. William Gaston, MD, 32 years old. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Dr. Gaston. Crocodile. Whoa, what? Crocodile? Yeah. Is that how the doctor died? <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt he, it. Maybe he took a trip to Florida. That would be an alligator. Alligator, crocodile, fine, Louisiana. Let's get funky for a while. That is a heavy pipe. Yeah. I don't even know where I'm freaking walking right now. Huh? I don't even know where I'm freaking walking right now. No, I just stepped on a couple of road apples. This one's a big one. 
You know, I've seen this name before, but it was in a different location. In memory of Mary Agnes, wife of Herbert Holman, born April 8, 1862, died February 23rd, 1899 in Native Ooh, Australia. There we go. That's a new one. Yeah. Australia, Russia, Ireland. You're like, hey, shiny in the rocks. Eliza, what is it? Holman? It disguises itself. What are you disguising yourself as? You're shiny stuff in the rock. Yeah, this was it's 64. Shiny. That one's kind of weird looking. Looks like an upside down table. Damage. Damage? There's yeah. Definitely yeah, looks like there's some, a lot of damage to these graves and headstones and plots. And... Yeah, this is the second one in Kentucky. There's not very many natives of Tennessee. Can this even exist back then? Everett. Everett? I honestly don't know. We don't have a state day every year that reminds us how we do. Hey, don't be hating on Nevada. Huh? So don't be hating on Nevada. <laughs> I'm not hating on Nevada. Amelia, the beloved wife of J.D. McDonald, a native of Pennsylvania, died February 8, 1864, 47 years old. Oh, within their child. May Ball died October 12, 1875. Five years. Sleep with Grandpa. Sleep with Grandpa. The Grandpa. Failed. My Grandpa. It's Grandpa. It failed. Samuel B. Turney died December 31st, 1908. 24 years old. That would have to suck. Die in your years. We're apprehensive. You're apprehensive to talk to us? That's okay. We don't blame you. You might not get a lot of visitors up here. Other than the horses. Oh, this one is, uh... Dakota Cook, Canada. Huh. 33 years old. No. Oh. Alright. I think that's about it, guys. We're actually headed back up to... Car there, um, but yeah, this is just like a little impromptu video. I figure we've done Harold. Harold, that's the second time we got Harold. Oh, well, thank you, Harold. You? I want to thank you, Harold, for allowing us in here and looking over us, making sure we didn't do anything to the headstones or or graffiti anything. Uh, but we're gonna leave now. Um, as much fun as we had visiting you, you need to stay here in the graveyard. You can't come home with us. It obviously needs your protection. So you need to stay here and look over look over all the other people lying at rest here in the cemetery. Uh, yeah, so this is the second cemetery we've done. Uh, first one we did was the Tonopah Cemetery next to the Clown Motel. Oh, look it. May Bell. That was the one that we got on that big one right there. He's dangerous. Dangerous. Ivy F. Fulton died October 27, 1874. Age one year, nine months, and seven days. May Bell Fulton. Is that an F or a B? I don't know.
I don't know if I belong to that one there though. Um, anyway, scroll moment. Uh, hope you guys like this little uh, impromptu video. Maybe we'll do more of them. Um, if you like it, like I said, slap that like button. Um, follow us on TikTok and on YouTube at Our, Par Our Paranormal Oasis. And uh, as we head out, we will uh, see you guys in the, uh, the next video. So uh, thanks for, uh, I don't know, hanging out with us while we take a look at piece of Nevada history. Gold Hill Hotel up here, or the Gold Hill Cemetery up here in Gold Hill, Nevada. So talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.